Back to the Public Gardens GIS training series. This is lesson three. Today we're going to learn how to digitize features using the ArcGIS Public Gardens data model, and we're also going to take a closer look at some of the model's capabilities. As in the previous lesson, you're going to need a computer with Windows XP or better, the Arc Editor or Arc Info license of ArcGIS Desktop 9 or 10 on your computer. And this video is going to showcase some of the new features in ArcGIS 10 for editing, so it's highly recommended that you have that version of the software on your computer before continuing. All right, let's get started. Okay, so to get started, uh, we're going to download some files from the APGG website. I posted some files on the website uh, so that we could pick up basically where we left off, and I added a few other things that are going to make things go a little bit smoother today. So if we go to apgg.org again, as we did in the previous lesson, and we scroll down to downloads, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom of the downloads page, you'll see that there's now a public garden GIS training section here. And we can download this lesson3.zip, which will contain the files that we need to get going today. So if you click on download, uh, we'll save this file to the folder that we were saving all our data in yesterday. So that's going to be uh, on my C drive, in my GIS folder, and I created this UC Davis Arboretum folder. So once you get in there, just hit save, and it should download really quick. And we can close the web browser here. Okay, so once that file is finished saving, you can close the web browser, and then open up Windows Explorer and navigate to the uh, folder where we saved everything. And for me, that's my C, GIS, and UC Davis Arboretum folder, and there it is. So, depending on the version of uh, ZIP software that you have on your computer, it, the, the methods for extracting this data is going to be a little bit different. If you don't have a program like WinZip or WinRAR or something like that on your computer, uh, then you can just right click and hit the extract button. Uh, that'll come up on this context menu. For me, I have to open with WinZip. And if you have any questions about how to do this, uh, consult the documentation for the uh, zip program that you have on your computer. I'm just going to click on zip here, and I'm going to unzip it to uh, the folder that we are working in and a new subfolder called Lesson 3. It goes through, and when the little green light comes on here in the lower right-hand corner, then we're all set. And it opens up the folder for us and shows us what's inside. And basically what we have is uh, a Geo database um, uh, with the data model already preloaded inside of it. And then I've created some aerial photography uh, that we're going to use to digitize some features off of. So I can close this window, close WinZip, and close the folder we're working in. And that concludes the download and unzip portion of this lesson. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is open up ArcMap and we'll start digitizing some data. And as always, ArcMap can take a little while to load. And once it does, we're going to start with another blank map as we did yesterday and just hit OK. And if your distributed geo database toolbar is still open, we're done with that, so you can go ahead and close that. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is add in this aerial photography that I included. Now if we click on Folder Connections, if all goes well, we should still have our connection to the folder where we're saving all of our data. And now inside of that, you should see if uh, everything worked out with the unzip in the previous section here, uh, you should see a Lesson 3 folder. And inside of it, it has a geodatabase, as I mentioned, uh, that has all of the things that we took a brief look at yesterday. And this file here called South Era KCE Section 2009.tiff, and what this is, is it's a 
portion of uh, the aerial pho photography for our garden, which is the UC Davis Arboretum, and it is just of what we call the South Area KC section, which is just a defined uh, area in our garden. And these photos are from 2009, so I saved the, the date in there. It's always good information. So if you click on that and hit Add, it'll add that photo to the map. And this photo, just to, to know a little bit about it, uh, it has a what we call a, a six-inch resolution. So that means that every little pixel uh, that makes up this picture uh, is approximately six inches on a side uh, in real-world units. So that's representing an area that's six inches by six inches on the ground. So what that really means, though, is that it's a pretty high-resolution photograph, and you can uh, see things pretty clearly. Uh, these cars are pretty clear. You can use the zoom in tool here and see how far you can zoom in before you start losing quality. So now you can start to make out these pixels here uh, that are the six inches by six inches. And get back to where we were, we'll hit the full extent button. And now we're zoomed all the way back out. So one of the first questions that people usually ask about aerial photography is where do I get it? So that solution is going to vary depending on uh, where your garden is and who you're associated with. So in our case, we're a university garden, so we're associated with the University of California, and uh, our campus gets the photos flown every year or two, and we usually ask them that when they get the new photos that they provide to us with them. If you're just starting out and you need to get to some aerial photography, one of the easiest places to get it from is the city. So if you want to talk to the planning department at your local city or even county, uh, they can generally provide you uh, copies of the aerial photography for free and just stress the fact that you're a, a you know kind of an education institution and that uh, tell them what you're going to be doing with it and they usually don't have any problems giving it to you. So if we carry on here, uh, I've got this photography from my campus, and I kind of clipped it down for this lesson to be in the area that we're going to work in today. And what we're going to do is kind of create a, a map for this little section of our garden. So uh, what we're going to start doing is add some more features from the data model in. So I'm going to hit the Add Data button. Click on this, and we're in the Lesson 3 folder here. Click on the UC Davis Arboretum Geodatabase, or whatever you've named it, and uh, go into the Base Map Feature data set. And then we're going to add a few things in. So if we scroll over, we're going to want to scroll over to the M's. We're going to add this uh, feature class called Mass Planting. We're going to add this one called Pavement Segment. You can select multiples by hitting the Control key on your keyboard before you click. We're going to add Plant Center and Plant Center Annotation. And we're going to add Planting Area and scroll over one more and Section. And then click Add and it'll add all of those feature classes from the data model into the Table of Contents on the left hand side. And it may take a minute for your software to do that. So now if you scroll down the table of contents here, you'll you'll see all these things that we just added in there. And there they all are. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start editing uh, in ArcMap. And basically we're going to start drawing in some of these features off of the photograph. So to start editing, uh, we're going to use the ArcGIS 10 method here. We're going to hit the editor toolbar and it's going to bring up this toolbar. If you're using ArcGIS 9, some of these commands are going to be a little bit different, uh, but you can definitely get them accomplished pretty much in the same format. So, and then we're going to uh, hit the editor drop down menu here and click start editing. And in ArcGIS 10, that brings up a create features panel on the right hand side. If you're in ArcGIS 9, uh, this panel won't come up, but you'll see a pencil tool on your editor toolbar, and you can use that to create most of the features that we're going to be creating now. So the next thing we're going to do is we're basically going to select what we want to create from this Create Features palette here, and then we're going to draw it on the map. So I want to start by delineating the section that we're working in uh, and drawing a boundary around it. So my photo is cut off just a little bit by this Create Features uh, palette here on the side. So I'm going to grab the Pan tool, and I'm going to move this photo over. And because we want to digitize with uh, a decent level of accuracy, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So I'm going to grab the uh, Zoom In tool and click a rectangle around the area of, our, of interest to kind of maximize it on the screen. 
Okay, so now we're ready to draw. So we scroll down here in the Create Features palette to Section, and just click on Section. And then you notice that our cursor changes to a crosshair, and we can start drawing. And basically, I want to delineate the boundary of the section as it's bounded by the road and the water. So I'm going to start clicking, and I'm going to put in a vertex every so often here along the edge of the pavement. And for the purposes of this lesson, we're not going to focus too much on accuracy. If you were doing this for your garden and you wanted to get things just right, you'd probably want to zoom in a lot further so that you could really match these vertices up to the boundary between the pavement and the soil. So when we get to the water, we're going to turn the corner here and keep going. You can see that the, the polygon in ArcGIS 10 kind of blocks off the area that you're working in a little bit. One solution to this problem might be to change the, the symbol for the polygon before you start drawing to something hollow so that it's not blocking you. But for this demo, we're just going to go with this. When you get to the back to where you started and you want to close it, you just double click to put in a new vertice and close the polygon. And now we have a polygon. And this polygon will define our section boundary. Now the next thing we want to do is to add a little attribute information about this. So on the editor toolbar, hit the attribute button, and that'll bring up a new palette in ArcGIS 10 and ArcGIS 9. It'll bring up a window in the middle of the screen. So over here, it shows the fields that are uh, associated with the section feature class, and it's, they're pretty basic for this one. Section ID needs to be a unique number that for each different section that you have in your garden. Since this is the first one we draw, we're just going to give it number one. And for the section name, this is the South Ericaceae section of our garden. So I'm going to type that in. And if you have any comments you want to add on this, maybe things that you need to do uh, in this section in the future related to GIS, you could put something here. So if you wanted to make a note about uh, checking the accuracy of your vertices or zooming in more or you know whatever, whatever it is that you want to come back to, this is a place that you can do that. Uh, so once we're all done with that, uh, we can just click this uh, Select Features tool here, or Edit tool, they call it now in ArcGIS 10, and click off it, and now it's not selected anymore. And what I'm going to do is make this clear so it's not blocking out everything else in the section. So in the Table of Contents, scroll down to Section, and click the symbol, and then select the hollow symbol. And I want to give it a little thicker border, so I'm going to change the outline width to 2. And click OK. Now we've just got a line all the way around it, and we can still see what's going on inside of it. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is fill in the rest of this area that is inside of our section. So we have uh, this pathway that kind of divides the, the section to a few chunks. And then we have some soil areas here where uh, we have some different plants planted. So we want to delineate all those and kind of fill in a continuous surface uh, inside of our section. So. We have a couple feature classes that we loaded in here that will take care of that for us. Uh, one is called Pavement Segment, which is uh, designed for different segments of pavement. Um, and it's in segments because pavement's uh, usually applied in pieces and not necessarily a continuous surface. So if you wanted to track uh, areas that have been repaved recently, you could draw different polygons for that, and thus we call those segments of pavement. And then we also have another feature class uh, called planting area, which is meant for these kind of soil areas here that we, uh, we reserve for planting plants in our garden. And each one of these different feature classes has some different subtypes uh, that define different types of uh, pavement segments here and different type of planting areas. So to start editing, uh, let's draw the, the planting area in first. So we're already in edit mode. And we're going to need to uh, bring up the Create Features palette again here. So to do that, uh, on our, in ArcGIS 10, you hit the Create Features button here at the right of the Editor toolbar. If you're in ArcGIS 9, you want to grab the Pencil feature and change the uh, target to being uh, to Planting Area of Type Soil. So for ArcGIS 10 users, Create Features, you're going to go down to Planting Area here, and we're going to create a Soil Planting Area. So click on Soil. And then the crosshair uh, cursor will come up, and we can start going. I accidentally clicked to start editing here, and it put a vertex in, but it put it in a good spot, so I'm going to go with it. 
So as we go along, we're just going to basically trace the outline of this planting area. And the photo shows a little bit of shadow here, so it's a little tough to see what's going on, but I'm just going to kind of uh, go along with it. So basically we want there to be no gaps between our section boundary and our planting area. So ArcGIS has some neat features for dealing with this. It's called snapping, and it'll essentially let you snap this new line that we're drawing to uh, an existing line. And as I get close to the edge of the line here, you'll see that it brings up a little snap tip saying what it's, what it's snapping to. In ArcGIS 9, you need to turn on snapping manually from the editor drop-down menu on the editor toolbar. But in ArcGIS 10, it should be on already for us and have the appropriate presets. So as you can see, it's going to snap to the section vertex. If I want to see the vertices that we're snapping to, I can click the V key and it will bring all of those different vertices up so it makes it really easy to find out how to draw this line. So I put one here to snap to this section vertex and I'm going to put another one at the next vertex and just kind of follow this pattern and the cursor should snap right to these for us. And when we get to the edge of the sidewalk, we're going to stop and draw a new line in. So I don't need to hold that V anymore. And I'm going to kind of follow the edge of the sidewalk. When I get to a spot where I want to stop, I will double click and it will close the polygon. Now, since we want to enter some attribute information about this, again, it would be really nice if the attribute window would pop up automatically for us. So I'm going to turn that option on. Uh, if you go into the editor drop down menu here in ArcGIS 9 or 10, and hit options. In ArcGIS 9, it sh I believe that the option is on the general tab here, but in 10 they have an attributes tab and you want to click this option here for display the attributes dialog before storing new features. And then we'll hit OK. So in this case we're going to need to bring up the attribute window manually. So on the editor toolbar hit attributes. And again it brings up this little palette here where we can type in the information. Now since we pulled the uh, symbol off the create features menu for soil. It already has the subtype for this planting area defined. We'll need to put in the ID for it and again since this is the first one we're drawing we're just going to put in number one and a name for it and planting areas can be a little bit weird to name so you can leave this blank if you don't like uh, coming up with a name for it but I'm just going to call this one the southwest planting area. I can put planting area if I want on there, but I'm just going to call it southwest because it's in the southwest portion of my map. And here you'll see there's a, there's a box for section ID. And basically what this box wants is the uh, ID that we typed in here kind of at the top for planting area, but for the section that we created earlier, which is this dark black line around. And we gave that was the first one we drew, so we know that's number one. But when I put this number in this box, it's essentially going to link these two features together so that if I click on the section, I'll now be able to see information about the planting areas inside of it. So at the top here, you'll see it has a thing for planting area, and it's going to show us the southwest planting area we just created. If I expand this, it'll show now this section, and with a plus icon, it's because we've linked these together. And now when I click on South Air Casey, you can see that it's essentially linked these two together so I can find out information about the section from, uh, by clicking on the planting area or vice versa. And we'll look at a little bit more of that functionality in a bit. So I've got two more planting areas on this map that I'd like to draw in, so I'm going to go ahead and do those next. So to do that, we need to get back to the Create Features palette. And we're going to draw in another soil planting area, so I'll click on that. And then we can start drawing. And again, I'm going to... Oops. Created a ver vertex I didn't want, so I'm going to hit Escape not escape actually I'm going to right click on it and hit delete sketch and we're going to start over. So first I'm going to start at the edge here and it's going to snap me to the edge of the section. It's always good to start at a corner I think and then again we're just going to drop these vertices on the map and for the purpose of this demo you don't have to spend too much time on the accuracy of this. And now, as I get to the uh, edge of the section again, I'm going to have it snap to the section edge, uh, as the snap tip shows. And then I want to snap to the vertices, so I press the V key, and it'll show me where those vertices are. Sometimes you may have to take your finger off the V key and 
press it again to have them show up. It's a little bit of a weird thing, but when I get to the last one, double click again, and it'll close it. And now because I turned on that option, it brings up the attribute window to remind me to enter information about uh, each feature as I create it. So this is our second planting area, so I'll give it the, an ID of two. <clears throat> and I will give it a name of southeast. And it's in the same section as the other one, so we'll give it the section ID as one. And then hit OK. All right, and we'll go through, and we're going to create a third planting area here. So again, click on soil, pick a starting point. Make sure you're snapping to the edge of the section if that's where your starting point is. And again, just drop the vertices in roughly along the boundary between the pathway and the, sec uh, and the soil area, the planting area. When we get to the section boundary again, make sure it's snapping. And then we're going to snap to the vertices, so press the V key to show where those vertices are. And I'm having to alternate my finger on and off of the V key to bring up those vertices. It's part of ArcMap that's never quite worked according to plan, I don't think. And when I get to the end, I'm going to double click to close that polygon. And again, we're going to type in a planting ID. This is the third one, so we type in three. Give it a name. This one's along the bank of the water, so I'm going to call it bank. And the uh, section ID, again, is one. Now, uh, if you off the editor toolbar, if you grab the edit tool and click off where there's no polygons to deselect what we just created, and then click on the black section boundary edge here, and then hit the attributes tab or button on the editor toolbar, you'll see now that we have uh, our section, and for inside of it, we have the South Area KCE section and there's a planting area and now we have three planting areas and they're all linked together uh, under this one section. There's the southeast, the southwest, and the bank. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is digitize uh, the pathway feature that kind of fills in the gap in our continuous coverage for our uh, section here. So to do that, we're going to grab the pathway symbol from uh, the Create Features palette at the side. And if you're kind of uh, mixed up between what the difference between a pathway and this other type, sidewalk here is, uh, we've kind of set up sidewalks to be essentially along roads uh, and everything else to be pathway. So the, the pathways going through the center of our garden, we call them pathways instead of sidewalks. But you can use that terminology however you'd like in your own garden. So anyway, to continue, uh, we select Pathway here. And we're going to start over here at the edge and make sure it snaps right to the vertex of this planting area. And we'll click our first point. And because we want to snap to all these other features, we'll hit the V to bring up the vertices again. And as we go, we can just move along really quickly and hit each one of these. And again, you may have to take your finger on and off of the V key to get these vertices to stay on the screen for you. And as we do it, you'll see the pathway change shape. and fill in that gap that was between our planting areas. And when I get to the end, I'll double click, and the attribute window comes up for us to fill in some information about it. Now, unlike the other feature classes that we just created some, uh, some polygons in, the pavement segment feature class has quite a few attributes associated with it. And we've designed this feature class for you to be able to do uh, full kind of analysis and data storage about pavement. So for facilities and infrastructure people, uh, pavement can be kind of a big thing. It uh, usually 
consumes a pretty large uh, amount of, uh, of money to maintain. So people are really interested in uh, storing a lot of information about it, about the status of it, um, and uh, when it was inspected, things like that. So to enter the information about it, this is the first piece of pavement, pavement we've entered information about. So the ID, again, will be one. And all of these feature classes start with an ID field, so you'll get accustomed to seeing that. And that's usually followed by a type field uh, or a subtype field. And since we selected pathway from the create features palette, that's already in there for us. And then it has an area for name if you want to name it. Uh, in this case, this is our South Air KCE section sidewalk. So I'll just call it South Air KCE pathway. Pathway, not sidewalk. The type of construction, there's a drop down menu for this. It defaults to asphalt, and that's what we have here. So we'll leave that. The construction date, if you know information about that, then you can put that in there, and that's a good way to track you know, how old it is and maybe what condition it's going to be in. Uh, there's a document, or a, excuse me, a field here for construction document URL, and this is where you can put in a, uh, a link to a file on your computer or on maybe a server in your uh, office that may have uh, the uh, actual construction documents, the actual blueprints or uh, designs that were used to uh, put in this pavement. It's a good way to keep all that information linked together. Uh, if there was some recent maintenance performed on it, you could uh, put in uh, what type of maintenance. If you had a patch or a seal uh, rebuild of this pathway, you could put that information in here, the date, and again, a link to uh, a document that may have more information about it. Again, there's, uh, there's some fields for inspection, what date it was last inspected on, the, uh, a link to a document that was used to inspect it, and then when the recommended next inspection would be. You can put in some information about the construction condition. There's a drop-down menu for this. I happen to know that this particular pathway is in satisfactory condition. It'll, it'll get by, but it's definitely not new. Uh, for people who do uh, modeling about uh, the condition of pavement, I know our university does this and a lot of uh, municipalities do this. Uh, if you have a pavement condition index, you can enter that here. Uh, and then a lot of these, the, the software programs will predict the condition in a few years. Uh, and it gives you some fields here to put that stuff in there. If these fields won't ever apply to you, you can go into our catalog and actually delete them so that they're, they're not in the model anymore. But we wanted to give you the capacity to store that information. If this payment's for a parking lot, you can put information about that. Uh, if, this, if it's on a bridge, then you can put information for that. If it's a roadway and it uh, gets uh, a lot of use, you can put in information about the load and uh, volume. Uh, pervious, and this is good for calculating pervious or impervious surface if you're trying to do uh, things like runoff calculations and things like that, which get into the, some of the advanced uses of GIS. But I happen to know that this is asphalt. It's not pervious asphalt, so I'm going to put in no. Is it ADA accessible? This is good information for being able to plan routes for, uh, for handicapped people. And then there's some IDs at the end that you can link to other things. If you've created a center line for this for uh, doing routing, you can link it to that center line. If you have some contact information about that and you wanted to store that in a geodatabase, we have the capacity for that. And you can put in the ID of that contact here. And then any comments, of course. So quite a few fields for pavement. But I'm, as you can see, I'm only using a couple of them. So uh, when we're all done here, you hit OK. And now it's created that polygon. Now it looks just like the planting area polygon. So I'm going to change the symbology on these. Uh, for pathway, I can just click on the pathway symbol in the table of contents and give it a gray asphalty kind of color. And that changes. And then for the planting area for soil, I'm going to click on that and give it a tan soilish color. And now it looks a little bit more realistic. Now, again, these polygons are blocking off the areas that we may want to draw some more features in. And now I'm interested in doing some plants. So I'm going to actually turn off the planting areas here so that we can see what's underneath. And we, right now we have this, uh, this pathway selected. So I'm going to grab the Edit tool here and click off onto the side here. And now there's nothing selected. And that's basically going to wrap up this next section here for digitizing base map features. So we've quickly created a section boundary, uh, some planting areas in it, and some pathways that all snap together to kind of create a continuous surface. So if we're done editing, we want to save our work. From the editor menu, you can hit Stop Editing. 
and I ask you if you want to save your edits, hit yes. And I recommend doing this after you've created a bunch of features. So every so often you probably want to do this because as we all know, programs crash and your work can get lost. And we're also going to close out uh, ArcMap for now and save our work. So I'm going to hit File, Save As. And we're going to want to navigate to that folder that we've been doing, saving all of our work in. So for me, that's on my C drive. My hard drive's getting full. Uh, GIS and the UC Davis Arboretum folder, yours may be named differently. And there's that Lesson 3 folder. And inside of it, I'm just going to name this Lesson 3 and hit Save. And then once you've done that, go ahead and close ArcMap. And that will conclude this section. We'll pick up the next section with digitizing plants. The next section of this lesson, we're going to digitize some plant data, similar to the fashion that we digitize the base map data. But the first thing I want to do is make some changes to uh, some of the properties of the data model or the geodatabase so that we have a nice valid list of values to choose from when we're entering some of our data. So open up our catalog. I like to maximize it to fill the screen. If it doesn't open up to the appropriate folder from your folder connections, hopefully you still have one created from Lesson 2 that will navigate to our working folder here. We'll go into Lesson 3, and inside of Lesson 3 here, we'll right-click on the UC Davis Arboretum Geodatabase and get Properties. And it brings up a few basic properties about the database click on the domains tab and this is where you can access all of the drop-down lists that are available for entering data uh, in the attributes window when we're creating uh, new features. So we're going to want to enter a few things or add a few things to these lists uh, so that when we select values for these fields we have a few more things to choose from. So uh, in the case of creating plants we've uh, created some, some domains that give you lists of uh, different values that you can choose from. And in this case, uh, we have some for collections. So you may have a group of plants that are in a given section of your garden, but you may consider them to be part of a collection that may be a little bit bigger than that section. Uh, so in this case, we're working in the South Area KCE section, but we have a collection of plants that we consider the Area KCE selection, or collection, excuse me. So if I click on collection name here, I've just created this placeholder domain that only has the values of unknown or other. And we can add to this list so that we can choose Eric Casey when, uh, when we're entering data. So I want other to be at the end of my list. And the way that these uh, values are sorted are the way that they're going to show up as in the drop down. So I'm going to just type over uh, other and add Eric Casey. And for code and description here, we're going to type the same thing. And then I'm going to add other back as a new row here. So I'll type in other. And when we're all done, just hit apply. And now we're going to add a couple more values to some other lists. The next one we want to do is called section name. So we'll scroll down until we get the section name. If you click on it here, Again, we have a placeholder domain that just has unknown and other. And I want to add South Area KC to this list. So I'm going to type over other. I'm going to type in South Area KC. And again, I want to leave other in there, so I'll put that in. And then again, hit apply to save your changes. And the last thing we're going to do is enter some values into a domain for username. And this is a list of people who are basically working with your GIS. So anytime you have people that are entering data or making changes to it, you want to know that that person has been doing that work or what person has been doing that work. So we've created a username field in a lot of the feature classes where you can basically track that. And this list should be a list of all the potential users of your GIS. So right now, it's just got a blank kind of a placeholder domain in here. And I want to add my name to this list. So in the code field, I'm going to, again, type over new user and put that at the end of the list. I'm going to type my name in. And again, same value on both sides. And then I want to have the option for a new user, just in case we forget to do this step before we get going. 
Okay. And you can add as many other people into this list right now as if you want to. Or you can come back to it when a, a new person starts working with you. Okay, so we're done making our changes to our domain, so we're going to go ahead and hit OK. And those changes should all be saved. And now we're done in our catalog, so you can go ahead and close it. And we're going to open up ArcMap, so find that shortcut and get it going. If your computer's slow, you can go do something else while it loads. Um, and now when we open up ArcGIS 10, uh, and this will probably happen in 9 as well, it'll list the, uh, the file that we just saved. So instead of having to do a file open, we can just select it from this box here and hit open. It'll likely take a few moments for that to come up. But when it does, you'll see our document just the way we left it when we were last working on it in the last section. And we can pick up where we left off. So the next order of business on this is to add in some plant features. So just as we did in the previous section, we're going to start editing. So from the editor toolbar, hit the drop down menu and select start editing. And in our create features palette here at the side, scroll down to mass planting, or scroll up, it's at the top here. And we're going to add in a group of plants, so I know that this little group of plants right here, uh, it, they're really overgrown uh, together, and but there's two different types growing in there, and so I can't really delineate the individuals in that, so I just want to basically draw a polygon around it and say that, that these two plants are in there, uh, and there's approximately this many individuals. We're not going to map them uh, as individuals in this case. So I know that there's two species in there, so under mass planting, I want to pick mixed two species. And then that crosshair icon comes up, and I can just go ahead and delineate that planting. When I get to the end, double click, and the attributes window should come up. And just like our other feature classes we created, the ID is going to be the first one. So we'll hit one. And the type is already selected, it's to two species, and you could have, you know, five species, five or more species, and again you can amend this list at any time if you want to. Uh, so here's where our domain values come in. Under section name here, if we click on this, the drop down comes up for our valid choices, and because we added South Eric AC, now we can just select that from a list. And same thing with collection. We know that these plants are in our Eric AC select collection, so we can just select that from the list. The survey date field, this is the date that we're creating this data. Uh, if you went out in the field and collected it with a mobile device, uh, you could also be entering this information out there. And we'll cover that in future lessons. So under survey date, we want it to be today. So you click the do drop down here and it gives you a today option at the bottom. Select that. And the username, here's where we get to select that list that we amended. And there is my name now. And the update date and update username fields, these are for uh, when the data is changed. So the survey date is the first time that the data was collected. But frequently with plants, you got to go back and, and resurvey them or kind of update them. Maybe the shape of this polygon has changed. Maybe the number of individuals in it has changed, things like that. So uh, this is the chance to do that. So because we hit, we're not updating this, I'm just going to leave it this blank just the way it is. And one thing I think I neglected here is the planting size. So with polygons, uh, we kind of left it vague as to how many individuals are in it. And in the case of, say, like a uh, wildflower garden where you may have a varying number of individuals and you can only guesstimate how many individuals are in there, we've just kind of created classes to make this job a little bit easier. And this gives you the capacity to be able to estimate the approximate number, number of individuals in your entire garden. Um, it, within a certain range. So this, I know that there's just a few uh, of these plants in here, but they're so grown together that I can't make them out. So this is a small group, but I could select medium, large, extra large. Uh, and again, these are just domains. You can change these to whatever uh, fits your needs. Okay, so we've got all of our fields entered. We could put in some comments if we wanted to. Um, I don't have any at the time, so I'm just going to hit OK. And now we have a polygon. So what that mass planting doesn't tell us, though, is that what what individuals are inside of that? Do we have uh, 
what what's the scientific name on these individuals um, and some other information about them that we might want to know. So to do that, we put some plant centers in there. And usually we'll use plant centers to denote uh, a tree, such as where my cursor is right now. You could make that out as an individual tree, so I could just grab a tree and put that in there. Um, in the case of a, a mass planting, we just want to put, we don't, know exactly where the center of these plants are. So we're just going to put a couple, a one dot for each species that resides inside this polygon, simply inside the polygon just to uh, associate the two together. So we're going to have a couple shrubs in here. So I'm going to grab a shrub and just put it in somewhere in the middle of the polygon. And with points, it's really easy. You just click on the map and they're in there and it brings up the attributes window. So this is the first plant center we've entered, so we'll give it an ID of one. <clears throat> and it's already got the type in there for us. If you know the accession number of this plant, you can type that in now. Uh, I have a, happen to know the accession number for this one is in our kind of local format here. And your accession numbers will likely vary, but the field can accommodate whatever you'd like. If you use BG Base, uh, you notice there's a field here for qualifier, um, which is basically says that this is, uh, you know, the tenth plant with this accession number, which we'll go ahead and use that. You can also set this number to be the same as the plant center ID if you don't use a qualifier, uh, or you can just uh, leave it blank, whatever fits your needs. So I happen to know that the, the genus of this plant, being in the Ericaceae family, is Arctostaphylus. And the species we're going to put in for this one and there's some other fields for different taxonomy if any of these things apply if you have a uh, uh, infraspecific epithet or a cultivar or trade name you can enter all that information here and then there's a field for a concatenated scientific name so even though we have a separate field for genus and species it's always a good idea to type in uh, the full name of the plant in this one field so that can be used for labeling and quick lookup so I'll type that in again. And then there's a field for plant size. Now, because we're drawing a polygon around this group of plants, we don't actually, we're not necessarily interested in the size of the individual. So if this were a single tree, we'd put in the, uh, the canopy diameter for the plant. Um, or if you want to measure it as canopy radius, you can do that as well. And this, this, uh, field can be used to scale the size of your tree symbols on the map, which is really handy. So, but because this is part of a mass planting, we always want to put in zero for those because we're not interested in the size of it because it's already delineated on our map. So, by putting in zero, this uh, tells the, the data model that it's definitely a mass planting and it's going to give it a certain kind of label so that it, uh, which we'll see later, so that it differentiates, differentiates between mass plantings and plant centers. Uh, you can select the units for the type of measurement. So if you're doing a tree, you want to use inches or feet or miles, if that suits you best, you can select that from the drop-down list. So here, there's a section name field. Again, we can select South Ericaceae and the collection. It's in the Ericaceae collection. If you use a grid cell system at your garden, there's a field here for you to put in what's, what's uh, grid cell that's in. Uh, later, we can calculate latitude and longitude values so that you can share your data um, over the internet. And then there's a survey date field again. So today's date we'll put in there. And the username, that's me. And then there's some update fields just as we had before. And there's a status field here for uh, the status of the plant. Uh, and it always defaults to alive, assuming that you're only mapping alive plants. But it also has a, uh, a value for dead um, and a value for removed. And now with dead and removed, you can uh, do what's called a definition query in the uh, arc map table of contents here. So I could go double click on plant center when I'm done with this. Can't do it now. Uh, and it, I can select that it only show me plants that are alive. And this gives you the option to basically track your dead or removed plants um, in the event that they come back later. And then you can just turn them back on by changing the status. <clears throat> At the bottom of the attributes window here, we have some IDs for linking this to other features. And because 
we know that this plant center is in our first mass planting. I'm putting in the number one here, we'll link these together so that when we click on the mass planting, it will bring up the centers associated with it. And thus, we'll be able to get the taxonomy on the plants that reside inside that polygon. Okay, so that's the last thing we're going to enter here. We're going to hit OK, and our point is created. And just to practice, we'll go through and do uh, one more of these. We know there's another species of Arctostaphylus inside this mass. We said there were two species in there. So we'll grab shrub again. And we'll just put another point arbitrarily inside the polygon. Now this is our second plant center, so we'll type in two. We'll go a little faster on the input of attributes on this one. And if you have a qualifier, you can put that in. And the genius on this. And this species on this one is different. And we'll type in the scientific name. As it is concatenated. And because it's part of a mass, we'll put in a size of zero. And we know that it's in our South Ericaceae section. And it's part of our Ericaceae collection. And we'll put in a date that it was surveyed today. And my name, already alive, and it put in the number one for the mass planting ID to link it to the polygon. Okay. Now, another thing we might want to do here is uh, label these plants. So right now this plant is selected. If I go to this plant center annotation layer that we have here, this is a layer that will store uh, labels that can be used for creating maps. Now in ArcMap, there's, a, there's two different ways for uh, dealing with uh, labels. ArcMap can create dynamic labels for something by, if you right click on it and you hit label features, it'll create dynamic labels for you. And those dynamic labels will move all around depending on what's on the map so that the labels don't block anything. But with plants, our maps are going to be very complex. There's going to be a lot of things on the map, so you need to have more control over your labels. So we use what's called annotation, which are fixed labels that you can put in a fixed position and they won't move. Now if I want to create a label for this plant that's selected, I can right click on plant center annotation, actually excuse me, right click on plant center and hit go to the selection menu and then put annotate selected features and it brings up this window that says what type of annotation you want to create and because we know that this is a mass planting we're going to get put it in the mass planting group here and this will make a certain type of label that you can differentiate plantings that are part of, part of a mass versus plantings that are uh, individuals. So we hit OK, and then you can see it's created this label. If we grab the zoom in tool here, you can zoom in and see that it's put the scientific name from the scientific name field plus the accession number on the map for us. And if we want to do that for this other feature, we can simply click on it, make sure it's selected here, do the same thing, right click on plant center, Go to the selection menu, hit annotate selected features, and this is also a mass planting. Click OK, and there you go, there's a label for it. So pretty simple, we've already defined rules in the data model to create these labels for you. And you can go through and change the look and feel of these labels and what information is displayed uh, by in our catalog. I want to show you a few cool little things that the data model can do for us. So if we zoom all the way back out to the full extent of our data, and grab the edit tool from the editor toolbar. We want to select our section boundary here and hit the attributes button on the editor toolbar to bring up some information about it. So now we can see that we have our South Air KCE feature for our section. If we click the plus icon, we can see that we have our Southwest, Southeast, and Bank features inside of it for planting areas. If we expand the uh, Southwest, uh, feature, we can see that we now have <clears throat> two plant centers inside of it, and yours may have the numbers three or two uh, instead of the scientific names, and you can change that display property by double clicking on plant center here, and going to display, and changing the display expression field 
uh, from maybe cultivar name as its default to scientific name. And you may have to click off and re-click on the section name to get that th these names to show up properly for you. So now, so what we're seeing here is that we can click on section and we can find out all the planting areas that are inside of it. We can find out all the plants that are inside that planting area. And then additionally, if we expand these, we can also find out what mass planting that these plants are part of. So essentially all this information is linked together and it gives you the ability to find out all types of things uh, just by building simple relationships between them. So now we can click on each one of these things, find out uh, you know, information about that mass planting, we can find out all the information about uh, this particular plant center and so on. So pretty neat way of being able to, to link data together and being able to access it. So that's pretty much going to conclude uh, our work on digitizing features. And there are many more features in the data model, but they pretty much all operate in the same way. There are l l features that are linked together that will let you kind of build relationships and have this kind of functionality where you can find out uh, information about one thing by clicking on another. And uh, they ha will have similar fields in them to define uh, the, the type of uh, information we're collecting about it here. Oops, I just docked this toolbar. So to finish up our work, we're going to uh, select the editor menu here, stop editing again, save our edits, then I'll close the palettes on the side, and then we're going to save our map document one more time, and we're going to close ArcMap. And that will conclude lesson three. So today we learned how to digitize base map and plant features using the ArcGIS Public Gardens data model. And we took a brief tour of some more of the features and functionality that the data model has to offer. Next time we're going to learn how to prepare for collecting data out in the field using Esri's ArcPad mobile software. See you next time.